Hey everybody, this is a full review video of the Zoom Livetrack L8 mixer. And I'm doing this review because quite frankly, a lot of the reviews that I've seen about this Zoom Livetrack L8 mixer are awful. So let's hope I can bring some useful information to you. And we're gonna start with two things that I think you need to know if you're considering buying this or if you already have it in terms of what does work and doesn't work with this mixer. This is an amazing mixer. There's so much in it. There's so much capability, so many more good points than my few bad points. There's obviously a few things I would like to see added, but I can make some workarounds for those and I'll share those. And because I'm packing a lot of information into this one video, here's a quick rundown on the different sections I'll be talking about and their timestamps, which are also in the comments below, so that you can just skip to the section you want to find out more about. The first thing you need to know is that these headphone outputs, all four of them, work perfectly well if you're using a jack-to-jack -jack lead. However, they do not work if you're using a jack-to-XLR. This means that even if your jack-to-XLR lead is balanced, it will still not work, but jack-to-jack -jack sends signal, absolutely no worries. So that's great, and then you can have your separate mixes uh, for a monitor mix if you're using this for a live show. The second thing I think you should know is that tracks seven and eight are shared. So on track seven, you can either have the line input, the USB input if you're linked up to a computer or a USB source, or you can have the sound pads. You cannot run them at the same time. Track eight works in the same way. You can either have the line input, the phone, the USB audio, or the sound pads, not all at once, which makes sense. But it may limit you if you were hoping to run a lot of these things in the same way. For example, if you want to run a phone line in and use that feature and have both banks of sound pads, it's not an option. So you probably should know that. If you're looking at using this mixer for your live shows, it is a great mixer, but this is probably where I'd say it falls the shortest in terms of what it can do and what's built into it. The reason I say that is simply because there's no EQ on the master output of any sort. And if you're like me, you've probably all done a gig where there's just one frequency that really sticks out and if you could just at least take something in that area out, you know that the sound that the public are hearing would just be so much nicer. There's no option to do that on the Zoom Livetrack L8. If you got the Zoom Livetrack L12, there is sweepable mids here that there's not on the L8, but you'd have to take out that frequency on every individual channel. So the way to get around that is you could buy an external, you know, graphic EQ and have that running out from the master outputs into a graphic EQ and then out to your speakers. And that would solve the problem, which is something I'm considering doing because of how strong the recording options are for live shows with this mixer. I know I'm starting with the negative points for this as a live show mixer, as your gigging mixer. But the other thing I would have loved to see is compression of some sort. It helps your sound be a little bit more punchy and the quality of what everybody's used to hearing these days is really, it's getting higher and higher. So perhaps if you're running something like the Voice Live 3, there's compression on your guitar and vocals if you have it turned on. So maybe it's not so important but it would have been a nice touch, I think, to add in to the Zoom L8. It's very intuitive. You simply select the channel that you want to work with. You've obviously got your gain settings up the top and you will get these LEDs lighting up to give you an indication of how much signal you're sending. 
as well as a signal light that flashes and will clip, will show red if you're too loud. So, so you can just adjust that back down to a comfortable level. Perfect. From there, while it's selected, you can simply go over to this channel strip. We can add a low cut if we want. We can tweak the EQ. We can also pan this either left or right if you're actually creating a stereo mix rather than the mono mix that a lot of us typically run. You can also adjust the effect on that channel that's getting sent to the effects return, how much of that signal is becoming part of it. And we should talk about the effects on the live track L8. I quite like them. There's a good option. Hall 1, Hall 2. Room, there's a plate reverb, there is a delay, a chorus, and two little vocal combinations which sound like a combination of delay and reverbs as you'd expect put in together. I think they're really pretty good overall. It's enough to give a bit of love to your guitar and your vocal and have you sounding nice so it's not just this dry, harsh sound. So great, tick that box, I like them. If we head back to the mixer screen, we simply select whether we want the master and then all of these faders are going to relate to the master mix which is coming out our two XLR front of house speakers. So you have to imagine that I have vocals in uh, channel one, but if I want my vocals and guitar set pretty equally for the front of house, a really nice mix, but perhaps in my monitor, I want a, I want a little bit more vocal. So what I would go over to is mix A, I would then run a monitor jack to jack, okay, nothing else will work, out to my monitor, I would set the level here and I would move this down to mix A. So now this output is running mix A. I'm at mix A on my speakers and these two faders will have actually reset. And now I'm mixing my mix A, which is gonna to go to my monitor. I'm gonna bring up a little more vocal because it's a noisy venue and now I can hear my vocal a little bit better, which is gonna be great and have me sing a bit more comfortably for the night. So I'm gonna bring up the effects return, again, however much I want on mix A. I'm gonna bring up the master to the level that suits me as well. If I click back to the master mix, these are now irrelevant and you'll see the little lights lighting up. To change once you switch mixes, you have to bring the fader down to where it was before and then it will adjust from there, which makes sense. You're bringing it back to exactly the level it was and once it reaches that, it knows that, yeah, okay, you want to adjust it. Rather than if we switched and I turned all effects return off and then I switch back to the master, suddenly the effect's gone. No, it doesn't happen, it remembers your mix. Awesome, good job, little Zoom mixer, pat, pat, pat. The last thing that is really great when you're using this as a live mixer is you can go to scenes and you can save these scenes. What it means is if I do a vocal and guitar gig, I can have my levels, I can have my effects and EQ saved for my vocal and for my guitar so that if I've just gone and set up with you know, a full band or a different combo and we've changed the settings on every channel, I know that just coming back and hitting scene, I can then recall those settings, provided you saved them in the first place, of course. <laughs> to save a scene, it's as simple as getting all your levels set where you want with effects and EQ on the individual channels, clicking the number of the button for the scene you'd like to save or recall. We're gonna click one, we're gonna go up to save, push this little button, ta-da, it's done. Let's test if it works just so you can see it in action. On this channel too, let's roll off all the effects. Let's just do that so it's simple to watch. And now uh, we will go scene one, recall. Let's see what happens.
Okay, the effect, totally back there, ready to go, which is super handy because you're going to have your favorite settings. Recording at your gigs onto the SD card. Let's talk about that. This is super simple, super intuitive, super easy, and you get a great result. You have two kind of main options here. You can record just the master output, which includes the reverb, and it includes your mix of how you're sounding on the night, essentially. And that's a stereo track wave file that's outputted, ready to go. The downside is, if there's something bad in your mix that night, then maybe your guitarist just sticks out and he's too loud. Well, the good news is, you can, if you want, record the master as a stereo file. You can also record individual channels as you go. Um, and the beauty of this is the recording on the individual channels is only after the gain and before the effects or the EQ or the panning. So you get just the raw track to then edit in a door in your software as much as you want to get a beautiful sound. And there's one thing that I love that this mixer does. If I want to capture the sound of my live performance and I'm singing at a mic right here, often there's no real sound of the room. So what you can do is set up another mic, provided you have a spare channel on your desk. You can set another mic, you can press record, you can leave this fader completely down, and you can mute that channel. Now, it's still going to record this individual track with our mic that might be out in the room. It could just be lying on the floor, to be honest. But it captures a little bit of the vibe of the venue, the space that we're in. And then when we come to mix later, we can put just a little bit of that in that helps us feel like we're in the environment that we recorded in. Obviously, if you don't want to do this, you don't have to. When you're recording live at a show, this doesn't affect at all your performance. There's no noticeable lag or change in the signal, the output. You can play your gig just as normal. It's all recording and being stored to the SD card in the background. And all you do to start recording is you hit this record button. It'll light up red. You hit play. And all of the tracks that you have read are now recording anything that's going in there. You can pause this by pressing play again. Otherwise, if you want to stop it completely, hit enter and that is your recording saved. So in this example, I will have one, two, three, four, five, six mono wave files. I will also have a stereo wave file of the master output, which is the mix from your live show. If you go to the play mode on the individual channels, so they're all lit up green, you can then play those back and these faders will still mix levels, will still change the effects return overall. So you can either have headphones on or going out to your main speakers, but for a sound check, how good is it to be able to record a song with the band and then maybe just play back the whole thing and either listen in cans or have one of your bandmates stand at the front, front of house and be like, whoa, uh, you are singing way too loud. <laughs> and you can just adjust it. If you've got too much reverb, you can obviously pull that down or go into the individual channels and say, whoa, that is a lot of reverb. I'm gonna turn that down. That was a little bit hectic. I've gone into the settings and changed it to be 48 kilohertz. There's a whole lot behind the scenes that you can actually tweak and adjust. So if you want to record at 44.1, you can do that. Zoom is great on some of these details behind the scenes. To get this set up as an audio interface, you will need to download the Zoom driver first and install that, restart your computer, and then you're good to go. Plugged into the computer, we can record 
tracks one, two, three, four, five, and six, all as individual tracks. We can record seven and eight, but they are shared. And what this means is if you want to hear the output, let's say you've just got a click track that you're recording to, you want to put down a guitar part, you will need to set track 7 to the USB as your main stereo output. This is how it's rigged up. Otherwise you'll hear nothing. So I really look at it as I've kind of got six inputs. I can, if I was recording, quite happily record 7 and 8 um, without hearing anything back from the computer. I can just listen to the mix on the Zoom, which works great but it's something you probably should know. <laughs> when you set this up on your computer and have it going as an interface, is that your inputs just show as input 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Uh, <laughs> and this is a little deceiving because input 1 is actually the master left, input 2 is the master right, and so input 3 is channel 1, input 4 is channel 2. Now for some people this will show up with that information, which is great, that makes things a lot simpler, but after you've used it once or twice, uh, provided you either watch this video or read the manual, it will make sense. I just did a test doing this and figuring it all out and it's a really clean signal. There doesn't appear to be any latency or issues with the unit which is great. Makes it all nice and simple. And the good news is if you want to, you could actually be recording those inputs onto the SD card as a backup. Seems like a little bit of overkill for me personally but maybe if John Mayer dropped round to your house and recorded for you, you might want to just doubly make sure that you've got it recorded. <laughs> Lastly, this unit is amazing for live streaming because it comes with this cable, which means you can plug this into your phone or your laptop and have the entire master output mix from this desk as your live streaming output. If you want to do a Facebook Live, Instagram Live, YouTube uh, live stream, do teaching, online lessons. You can plug in this nice cable that came with it. Remember to switch that channel to be the phone. Plug it into your phone and you're now good to go. The mix that's on your desk is now getting sent to all your viewers. You can still run headphones if you're doing a, a live stream or a Google Hangout where other people can talk. You'll hear what they say and they'll hear the mix of your audio going out as your live stream sound and audio, which I just think is superb. And I know a lot of people are doing live streaming at the moment. I, j I just think this is, this is amazing for getting a great sound and uh, being able to still have headphones listen and engage and connect. So there's not really much to it other than setting channel eight to your, your phone or you can plug this into your laptop and you have a full live streaming capable, fully mixed uh, band output where you can also hear and respond. It's great, so good. So overall, look, there's a lot of information, but I think you can tell that I'm really stoked with it. And I took it straight and did three shows without reading a manual, without doing anything. And it's very intuitive, it went really well. Okay, I've just finished gig number three with this, uh, little mixer. I really like it. I've learned things as I've gone on but there's a lot to it packed into this unit for a pretty reasonable price I think given what you're getting. So I hope some of you have fun with it. For some of you you're already using it maybe you learned some more things that are a little bit useful for your live shows or tweaks or adjustments that you can do. For some of you that are thinking of getting it hopefully this helps you understand whether it actually is going to be useful to you or whether maybe something else is better instead. But uh, I'm looking forward to playing around a lot more with this. Ciao! 
There was a boy A very strange enchanted boy They say he traveled very far Very far 